What is good everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Before we jump into today's video, I did want to put up a little PSA. So a lot of people have asked me in the past if we'll ever get an MDT official figure or like a figure to be sold of myself or in myself like I appeared in GCW before. Like my pick fed style figure. You know, like a figure like this or you know, just an elite style figure or just any official MDT action figure. People have asked me in the past about that and I've looked into many different processes but I decided to take to Twitter and I tweeted out hashtag AskMajorPod and I tweeted out to the Major Wrestling Figure Podcast, and I asked them if it would ever be possible to get an official MDT figure in one of the Major Wrestling Figure Podcast toy lines, whether it be the Bendies or maybe the Superstar style figures that we've seen on Ringside Collectibles before. I just reached out to them and asked them what the interest level would be. You know, I added in there that I thought my tattoos and my colorful gear would make for a very toyetic piece, and if we ever want something like that to come to fruition, we're, we're going to have to blow that tweet up, or we're going to have to like and retweet that tweet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a link in the description below to that tweet, for you to go like it, retweet it, whatever the case is, man. If you guys have any interest whatsoever in an official MDT figure or would like, think it would be cool or you want one or you want to order one or something like that, go like and retweet that tweet. Even if it got a million likes and retweets, it doesn't mean they're going to make a figure or, you know, it's not like the figure's being made or something like that. But I think that if we want to get some traction or even give possibility to the idea, then I feel like it's something that we need to do. So I greatly appreciate it. If you don't have any interest in an MDT figure, don't worry about it. You know, I'm not asking for you to go and do it just simply because I'm asking if you genuinely have any interest and that's something that you want to see in the future then I would greatly appreciate a retweet and like because I think it would be something that would be amazing you know I think that'd be incredible to bring that to fruition but I wanted to get on here and plug it at the beginning of the video so you guys can go retweet and like that tweet if you guys want to ever see that come to fruition or you just want to help out whatever the case is man so if you guys have any interest whatsoever in an official MDT figure one day or you know it's just something that you would love to have in your collection go to that tweet like and retweet it it would be awesome just to try and gauge some interest, you know, and try, try to see what the level's like. I would greatly appreciate it. If not, don't worry about it, but enjoy the rest of the video, and I'll see you guys, I guess, in the AEW Unrivaled ranking. What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, we're back with another My Damn Thoughts episode, and it is on AEW Unrivaled Series 10. Now, this is a wave that a lot of people have been waiting on the ranking for and, like, the breakdown of the set. You know, I didn't expect a lot of people to be to care about it, so I don't even know how many people are going to watch this. Hopefully, you guys do anyway. I know this set came out about a week and a half, two weeks ago or something like that, but I had a lot of people hit me up asking about it, so I wanted to do my due diligence and give it to you anyways, but if you guys don't know what My Damn Thoughts is, it's basically where we take a WWE Elite Figure Wave, an AEW Unrivaled Unmatched Wave, and we break it all down. We have all of my thoughts here in the video, and we give a lot of details about the set that maybe you didn't think about, or maybe, you know, you want some extra intel about this set. That's what we do here, man. But we start off my damn thoughts with my first thoughts on the set as I saw it. The first time I saw the images of the set, and I do believe it was AEW Revolution Fan Fest when we saw this set, and my first thoughts were that I liked it. You know, I thought that it was a pretty well-rounded set. You got some repeats got some first time in the line. You got some cool stuff going on with it. I like the set. It wasn't a, an earth-shattering set, as we like to say, but it was a good set. It was a solid set. I liked it. Now, getting into who I think the shelf warmer in the set is going to be, this is going to kind of turn into a rant, okay? I want to get, like, a face camera for these videos. Let me know if you'd like this. Get a face camera so when I'm talking like this, I can have a little window that I can look over here and talk to you about before we go back to the figure itself, if that makes sense. So I'd record myself from two different angles, and then I can get myself talking to the camera here, and and then I could, you know, back in the front here. Anyway, shelf form in the set. It's hard to tell because there's lots of different levels to this. I feel like AEW figures are overproduced now. I feel like you can find them anywhere. Most figures in most sets are going to shelf warm. If you guys have seen the recent stuff from Ollie's, people are walking into Ollie's and finding like 200, 300 AEW figures just chilling on the shelves. Multiple chases. It's been an outstanding thing that I've never seen before. I hit up all the Ollie's in my area. I called them all. Didn't have any. Hate to see it. But the shelf warmer in the set could be a different amount of people. People. Now, I think that Andrade and Wardlow are not up for debate here. I think both of these guys will sell. But all of these four right here have a potential to shelf warm. Britt Baker, just because women's figures tend to shelf warm and they overproduce the first unmatched figure a lot. Miro, same deal as Britt Baker, overproduced the first one, and the first one was so god awful. But that could lead to this one not shelf warming as much because it is a way better upgrade to the first version, and it actually looks like Miro compared to the first one. This Taz is not going to be the Taz that a lot of people want, and this Hay. 
Hager is a very unique look to Hager. It's a great head sculpt, but he's very massive, and the first Hager was god-awful, and it's shelf-warm like hell. So I don't know. It's kind of a toss-up. I think that it would be one of these three. If I had to give it to one, I'd probably say Hager or Britt Baker, just because I think a lot of people are just going to want a Taz figure in general. So I think I'd give it to Hager or, or Britt Baker. I think Hager and Baker. Baker and Hager. Just saying that three times fast. Or don't, because I'd be dumb. Next up, we have the hottest figure in the set, and it's going to come down to these two guys right here. I think that Andrade and Wardlow are going to be the hottest in the set. Wardlow's first figure, when it first came out, he was just MJF's lackey. Now he's more of a singles big time star. I think Wardlow, people are going to want that, and the white gear is much better than the black gear from last time. And then Andrade, you guys know that, you know, he has more of a wider audience or a fan base, I'd say, just because of his WWE connection. And I think that the white pants are a cool look. I, I don't know. And he's masked. I think he'll do pretty solid. I think people are going to want Andrade. So those are the two hottest figures in the set, in my opinion. Now, we're getting into the chase figures. Speaking of hotness, we're getting into the chase figures. And the chase figures are ultimately hot. But in this set, they're kind of eh. You do have another Britt Baker, which is a pretty cool figure in the red gear. I thought it was a pretty solid chase. But then you have the probably the worst chase so far, and that's going to be Taz, okay? This Taz figure, I wish that this was the chase in the brown, but they're both pretty god-awful. I think that Miro would have been a better chase. I think that, you know, Wardlow would have been a, a hell of a lot better chase. With their different gears they could have put on either of these figures, it would have been great, but they went with Taz and Britt. The Taz is just so lazy. It just comes with a hat, glasses, jacket, and then it's got gray joggers instead of green. It's just, or brown, or greenish brown, or shit brown, whatever you want to say. Next up is the best head sculpt. Now, this is where the shelf warmers get to shine, because I think that Hager right here, man, this head sculpt right here, I think this is a damn good head sculpt right here. I think this is a damn good head sculpt. I like the yelling one as well. I think both of those are really, really good. I think that they make a lot of sense. I know you got the inner circle and the red on the head, but I still think this is a really strong head. And then Britt Baker back here, this is her best head sculpt we've seen, even over the Supreme, man. This right here is her best head sculpt. I like the makeup. I like the hair color. I, I like the likeness a lot. I think that these two heads are the two best in the set. If I had to give it a one, I think Britt Baker edges it out just slightly. You know, it's not by a huge landslide victory, but I think it does beat out the Hager, so we'll take that. Next up, we're getting into the best articulation, and that's going to go to my man Andrade right here, man. He's got a lot of stuff going on. He's got good head articulation up and down. You get a pretty solid ab crunch. He's brought, you know, like as bad as this ab crunch is, it's not like bad, but it's not, you know, it's not as good as other AEW and rival figures. It's the best in the set because the rest of them really can't bend over that far because of the different torsos, but he's got the wide split. You got the ball joints, upper thigh cut, double jointed knee, lower shin cut, and you get the beautiful ankle pivot. Look at that pivot of ankle. It's just a figure that feels really good in the hand. I mean, to be real, all these figures feel really good in the hand, but Andrade takes the cake. You know, he, he feels excellent in the hand. I think Miro won this award. No, he didn't. He, he just, he got the underrated award because Kenny Omega and Darby Allen were in that unmatched series one set, but this figure, all of Miro's figures feel really good in the hand as well. Got to give a little honorable mention to Miro for feeling good in the hand. He just doesn't have the technicality of a Kenny Omega or, or a Darby. You're not beating those figures, man. You can get the hell out. You're not going to be able to compete with those. Those are some of the best articulated figures, wrestling figures in general, like in all of the land right now that have ever released. Though The Kenny Omega Unmatched and the Darby Allen Unmatched from Series 1 are godly. Now, worst articulation, it was down to Taz and, and Britt over here, which are the chase figures, but it ultimately went to Britt Baker just because her ab crunch, her stomach crunch right there. It's, uh, it, she's pretty much even with Taz on the ab crunch, but the, the legs only go out so far, and these same legs we've seen since Un Unmatched 1 drive me nuts. This is a significant upgrade from the Unmatched 1, but, oh uh, god. It just doesn't, uh, it doesn't get, it doesn't get it going, you know what I'm saying? It's lacking still, and I think Taz beats it out slightly. I mean, look at Taz right here. Not only, it, like, he does have the greatest ab cut, but his arms feel great. He has a fantastic split. He's got the upper thigh cut, double joint, and the lower shin there, and he's got a perfect ankle rock. So, you're not effing with, with you know, I really wish this was a turtleneck, because I'd call him turtleneck Taz. I guess I could call him turtleneck Taz, because, I mean, it's literally, it's a tight sweater, man. It's a really tight sweater, which I love wearing, by the way. These sweaters right here, man, when it's cold outside, the sweatshirts, oh, God, hoodies and sweatshirts and joggers, just, oh, God, I, I look forward to the cold weather, Brad. And I love hot weather, but I'd be wearing hot stuff. I'd be wearing sweatshirts and hoodies in the 105 degree, insanely humid Alabama heat. Next up is the best accessory. And for me, it went to Hager's head. Now, I know he's got the little scuff on the eyebrow, right? He's got the little scuff there, but this is a, a just a fantastic head sculpt. This is so good. He did, he did. Maybe he didn't win best head sculpt, but he won the best accessory because this head sculpt's fantastic. What a great head sculpt, man. I'm probably going to put this on my first 
first Series Hager or get another Unrivaled Series 10 and take the paint off and paint it up differently and put that on there because these heads are great. Could not talk about this set and not talk about this accessory right here. This is this is a freaking good head sculpt. Now it is the time of the video to get into how many of each figure we have so far. Now, for Taz, you have this one and you have the Chase. We already covered it in this video. Nothing new there. I'm going to put them off screen because we're doing the ranking next. Next up, we have Andrade. This is the only Andrade we have so far from AEW and Unrivaled. I'm sure we're going to get plenty more to come. I don't think any are announced just yet, but we're definitely getting more. Next up, we have three individuals that have one figure already. You have Hager, who is in the AEW Unrivaled 6, and you have the Unrivaled 6 Chase, which are both god-awful in comparison to this figure. This figure is a backward bicep. I know his arm's backwards. All right, I got to order another one. But this figure this figure is, is pretty damn good. I like this figure a lot. It's just very, you know, it's it's not perfect. It's just, you know, it's you got to applaud it where it is. Next up, you have Miro. First Miro was the Unmatched Series 1 with the blonde hair. Seems like yesterday I was finding it. Now we have a way better version. Just Life just flies by, bro. Next up, we have my man Wardlow. We already know about Wardlow's Unmatched Series 2 figure. Great figure. Pretty much the same exact figure as this, but it's repainted. But the white gear is just two chef's kiss not to talk about. And last but not least, you have Britt Baker, who was in Unmatched Series number 1. You have the Unmatched Series 1 Chase. You had the Supreme figure. You had the Unrivaled 10, which is this one. And then you had the Unrivaled 10 Chase. Then you have the Ringside Exclusive Blood and Guts Brett Baker, which is a pretty solid figure as well. But anyways, man, it is time to rank AEW Unrivaled Series number 10 from worst to best in my own personal opinion. Now, you guys know the rules. Just because a figure comes in at the bottom doesn't mean it doesn't have any good things about it and it's just complete trash. And just because a figure is number one on the set does not mean that it is without any faults whatsoever and it's just the God's greatest figure of all time. So just take that into consideration and I will explain my ranking and why I ranked it thus far. So getting into my ranking, man, starting out at the bottom is going to be Taz. Now, to be honest with you, really like this figure a lot, man. Honestly, it feels so good in hand. It pains me to put him at the bottom because it's one of those figures you could just pick up and pose all day. Like, I just want to pose him all day long. It is a very fun figure, but his head sculpt's kind of crap. It's, you know, it's not the best. It's, it's not crap. It's just not my favorite. It's just a very weird gear to give for our first Taz ever. Even though it's accurate, he came with a rubber jacket. It's just, it, it just, it didn't work completely, okay? It did not work completely, but he comes in at the bottom with the rest of the set. There's a lot of things I love about the Taz, but at the same time, man, he did come in at the bottom. Next up is going to be Jake Hager, another great figure in its own right. I love the head sculpts. I just feel like he's massive. He's massive. The torso's a bit loose here. Like, you see this rocking right here? Would you focus? He rocks right here. I mean, he's he's a little bit loose. He, he can move around pretty good. You guys can see the boot cut. You got the lower shin, the upper thigh, the double jointed knee. It's a fun figure. I just think that at the end of the day, it's not one that I would want over some others in this set, and I think that's what it comes down to. So we have Taz at six. We got Hager at five. Coming in at four, we got Britt Baker DMD. Really great figure. Best Brit so far, unless you're comparing the Supreme, of course, but this is the best unrivaled version of Britt Baker. You have the Supreme. This is the unrivaled. Best unrivaled. Here it is. I like what they got going on with it. Great head sculpts. Very good Britt Baker. Miles ahead of other Britt Bakers besides the Supreme. Number three, we're going with my man Miro. I like this head sculpt a lot. I like this figure a lot. I love the gear that we got. I think that this is fantastic. You know, Miro's first figure was good. This was an upgrade from that. I'd really like to see chest hair here, but I do like this Miro. He poses around well. It's a great gear. It's a good formula. I like the Miro a lot. I just need some chest hair. Would have sent him over the top. Not saying he would be number two or one. It's just, I think that would have added an element to it. Getting into our number two and number one. Coming in at number two is going to be Andrade. We got Andrade at number two. I love this figure. I like the head sculpts. I like the skin tone. I like the mask. I like the pinstripe pants. I like this figure a whole lot. You guys know that I was marking out about the pinstripe pants and they're they're just as good as I thought. You know, they're really, really good. I like this figure a whole lot. It's got a lot of great things going on. I wish I had a cloth jacket or, or something different than the rubber, but he is a really great figure and I put him at number two. He honestly has a case for number one, but at number one, we have one of my favorite AEW superstars and the white gear. I mean, what are you going to do, man? You got the interchangeable screen. I know it's a repaint, okay? It's a repaint. We understand that. This is my favorite figure from the set, okay? It just is. It's just, it just is what it is, man. I love the Wardlow, and I love the Wardlow in white right there, man. This is a solid set overall, though. At the end of the day, I gave the set a full-on ranking of 7.5 or 8 out of 10. I think that it could have been over the top. I think that they could have improved some things here and there, but at the end of the day, this is my final ranking. 
Wardlow, one, Andrade, two, Miro, three, Britt Baker, four, Hager, five, and Taz at number six. But that pretty much wraps up my ranking of AEW Unrivaled Series 10 from worst to best. Before we get out of here, we do need to get into the random shout out. But before we get into the random shout out, guys, if you want, if you have any interest whatsoever in create in having an MDT figure in the future or, or trying to help me gauge interest on an MDT figure being made, go to the tweet that I linked in the description or just go to my Twitter. Go to the pinned tweet on my Twitter. Ask Major Pod. Go retweet and like that tweet if you have any interest in an MDT action figure anytime in the future or you know if you'd like to see something like that come to fruition but let's get into the random shout out and this shout out is going to go to ian giles who says when's the next surgery i've been waiting forever even an appointment i'm not eating or sleeping until he posts it well brad i hope to god you eat but no i do i do want to get the next surgery out very soon we have a lot of figures to fix up and stuff like that it's just trying to find the time for it because you guys know on this next episode we're gonna have a ton of torso cracks i may even do back-to-back -back episodes where we feature a ton of torso cracks and then we come back and then we have the more figures that we got in the big unboxing. So I may put all the Randy Orton's and some other torso cracks in there and then come right back with another episode. But a huge shout out to Ian Giles. I appreciate the support on surgery. Surgery is returning soon, man. Promise you that. But huge shout out to Ian for that. Go check out the Twitter tweet if you have interest. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys next time. Have a blessed one. You crossed the line. I've been